it's very difficult sometimes to be a Toastmaster. You know how it is. We feel like our plates are full. We feel that our cups are full. We find ourselves sometimes in this state of overwhelm with everything else going on in the world. And yet know that despite everything, you are not alone. You're not alone in the wilderness. You are not alone on your path. If you looked ahead, you'd see somebody ahead of you. And if you look behind you, you'd see somebody behind you too. Those are Toastmasters. You are all going in the same direction toward a more fulfilling life, toward a more, more productive life. So just stand there, look your buddy front or back in the eye and say, okay, buddy, find your path, let's go. Tamsin, would you hit that slide? I don't have, it's on your screen. I don't have, we're sharing your screen. You have all the controls. I do not have any. Suzanne, move your yes. cursor over the screen itself and then click. And there it there is. Go. Click the Thank slide. you, Patrick. I hope this is not being recorded. And if it is, well, it shows how generous Toastmasters are and how helpful. Now you'll see on the screen, a plan is called the Pathways Buddy Plan. It is something that you think may not need to be recorded. It may not need to be written down because haven't you heard of the buddy system? Haven't you had a buddy as a child? I did as a Girl Scout. I did as a lab partner in college. I did at work, sort of a buddy. We know how buddies work. They join us, they help us, they support us. And you may say, why have it written down? Well, I can tell you that you need to start with a written plan for several reasons. Number one, you need to make it permanent. And if you need to train people, you need to have some sort of a record of what your plan is all about. Also, you need to assess your plan at the end of the year or at various intervals. So that means you need to know what you wrote down and how you're doing it. But don't worry, I will show you how this happened. I called this plan the Happy Toastmaster plan. This is how Happy Toastmasters, that mythical happy place in the universe, lives with its buddies. So start with a plan, make it yours, and implement it into reality. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, our chief want in life is someone who shall make us do what we can. Hey, there's a buddy for you. I have a writing partner named Jamie every Sunday at 10 o'clock. She's on the screen with me with Zoom and we talk about what we're writing. We make a commitment to meet, even if we're sleepy, even if we're still in our pajamas. And I thought, gosh, that's what we need for Toastmasters. We need somebody who will hold us to our path. We need somebody who will say, hey, you can do this. And we need somebody to say, hey, you got to step it up. You got to do that speech. When is it going to get scheduled? That is a buddy. How do you implement your buddy plan? It's relatively easy. You sit down with a block of time and some people and you start brainstorming. You start talking about what it means to you. Now, I wrote out the draft. All you need to do is go through and change it up the way you want it. When you look at your plan, you'll want to see how you want things to work. For instance, if you have an onboarding or a new member packet, a new member kit, you want to look at that. 
I made some suggestions on the back and I have one suggestion. I've created a form that you can have. In fact, you can have everything that you see here and more because at the end of this presentation, you will see my name, phone number and email address to email me for whatever you want. And since this is my Toastmaster project, uh, hopefully it will get my DTM this year. I am anxious and willing and able to go to your club and help you implement it. You want to make sure that your path is in sync with others that you find as your buddy. And it doesn't necessarily have to be so. What you want to do, of course, is set criteria for what a buddy, when a buddy can be a buddy. And the other simple criteria is they have to be in sync with the Toastmaster vision and the Toastmaster values. Pretty easy. The important thing in your plan and anyone's plan is that everyone gets a buddy. Why is that? Because the buddy system means that everyone will start. The buddy system's for everybody, a new member and as well as established members. What happens with a buddy plan and a new member is everyone starts very quickly. There's no gap, there's no anxiety about getting online and giving speeches. The stress and the confusion decreases. Stress levels decrease. It's been found that having a buddy makes a learning environment more collaborative and it makes stress go down drastically. That's what we want, right? Also, members have proof that Happy Toastmasters is a supportive club. All they have to do is show their document and show their meeting, show what they do. Hey, we're supportive and we like each other. Nobody is left alone to struggle. And the most important thing is officers like the VP of Education, and the VP of membership have time to do their own projects. The other thing is that Toastmasters, because we do all of this, have a quicker, easier, more effective way to get to that distinguished status. I love this quote by Maya Angelou. She's one of my favorites. She says, when you learn, teach, and when you give, when you get, you give. You learn and you pass it on. Easy. It's what we do as Toastmasters. Remember, there is a buddy for everyone. You need to understand their needs and you need to know their goals. A new buddy for a new Toastmaster has a very specific task. Their task is to transfer knowledge and mindset. You know, when a person comes into an organization and they don't quite know the culture, a buddy can help a new member say, hey, I'm understanding this. I'm understanding how Toastmasters do table topics and evaluate. I understand the values of being generous, available, and a good citizen. For established members, it's a completely different story. Established members need a buddy to fill in the gaps of knowledge and to be supportive. Now we know a lot of really great Toastmasters who haven't gotten on their path because the technology is in the way, but they have something to offer in terms of tips and tricks and best practices. It's an even exchange and it works. Members need to be 
trained on how to be a buddy. Now you might think it just comes naturally, but we are not talking about the schoolyard anymore. We're talking about Toastmasters. They need to know the tips and guidelines. How do you become the best buddy? Well, the most important watchwords are be open, be transparent, and be direct. We know that many times people have issues with their club, with Toastmasters in general. And when they sit down with a new buddy, they may be tempted to say, and this is how it is. If you want to train your buddies correctly, you want to make sure that they leave any kind of negativity, any sort of speculation, or any type of saying things that they would regret later behind. It's important because the new member doesn't often have context for whatever is going on. And it's important to be professional and be direct at the same time and friendly at the same time and still get your point across. Many times negativity, speculation, and just general bad stuff can turn off an established member and turn a otherwise good buddy relationship and cause it to just go sideways. So you want to make sure that all buddies understand what it means to be professional yet friendly. Now many buddies form relationships outside of Toastmasters. They decide they love their buddies so much, they're gonna see them for coffee. They're gonna go Christmas shopping with them. They're gonna name their firstborn after their buddy. Uh, that's fine. But for the most part, our buddies are gonna be our buddies. They're there to help us get things done. And we like having them around. Toastmasters teaches us leadership, and communication. And the most important thing I think that we sometimes miss in the mix is that Toastmasters helps us help others and each other. We have a lot of terms that are tossed around in Toastmasters. We have mentors, coaches, and now we have a buddy. Well, what is a buddy? I mean, how is a buddy different? We want to be very clear about these relationships. Let's start from the top. A mentor is somebody who's there for the guidance of the mentee. They are there to help relate Toastmaster teachings to their professional life, to whatever they want to aspire to. They are there guiding and helping. It's more of a top down type of a relationship. Coaches are there for the short term. They are there to get in there, coach a person and get out. So coaches may be asked to help somebody with their PowerPoint skills. For instance, I could use a coach right now on how to get my PowerPoint uploaded to Zoom. <laughs> And I would like to have that person show up tomorrow, <laughs> but they often don't happen that way. And the vice president of education or membership or any other officer or any Toastmaster can tell you how to get a coach. You can say, hey, I wanna become better online. I wanna have a better online presence. Well, your coach can sit with you and say, how far do you wanna go? And you may wanna say, hey, I wanna make sure I just don't slobber when I talk. And they say, great, we got that covered. And they do it until that is done and they're out of there. A buddy is a warm, fuzzy relationship. It is somebody who you can talk with. They're more peers. And in the case of a new buddy and a new member, it can go from 
somebody who's teaching them the ropes, helping them during the first month with learning specific tasks, to the second month where they become more of a colleague. They help them with tips and tricks and they let them know where the mind fields are when you're talking and when you're presenting. So that is what a buddy is. A buddy can be forever. A buddy can be for a month, two months, three months. A buddy is a buddy until you say, hey, I'm ready for something else. And it's okay. Now, remember I said set expectations. It's important for everyone to get these things right. The buddy relationship is confidential. It's positive, supportive. It's based on integrity and trust. Everything in the Toastmaster promise, everything in the values and vision. vision it is wonderful. And no gossip or negativity. Set those expectations, you're good to go. How do you handle it when the buddy relationship ends? And many times it does. Maybe to the dismay of one of the buddies. That's okay. This is my philosophy. It's just life. You rinse. You repeat, there's nothing personal going on here. You just get another cup of coffee or tea or whatever you happen to like to drink and you move on. It's in and out. That's the way life is. I hope you can remember some of those boyfriends that or girlfriends that you mourned and now you say, oh my goodness, wasn't that a good thing? <laughs> They're out of my life. But that doesn't mean that you don't greet them in the grocery store. You don't like having coffee with them and they call. It's, it's the way we do things. Now, one of the things you want to do is set up data. Now, this is something that's a little rough. I've been working with it, but you can see the Happy Toastmasters spreadsheet. Let's imagine the vice president of Education and the vice president of membership say, we want to make sure people are happy. What that means is we check with them at least once a month. We send them an email. And if they don't respond with a score from one to five, how happy they are. You call them up and you say, how happy are you with your buddy? How satisfied are you? And if they say four and five, hey, it's going good. If they're saying two and three, well, you've got some work to do. You've got to find out what's going wrong. I think that is one of the things that Toastmasters don't do enough of, that quality control part of these relationships as well as meetings and how we do things. So you can see that they highlighted the yellow threes, the twos, and they said, we're calling these people to find out why they are not satisfied. Now, it could have been they misunderstood the directions, and it wasn't how satisfied are you with life, it's like how satis satisfied are you with your buddy, but it could be that maybe in the beginning that they had some weird mannerism that they corrected. Maybe they were like pulling their nose during the meetings and they you said something and they stopped it. You know, you don't know what's going on, but you need to find out. This is because members need to know that they are covered. Somebody is watching out for them. Their vice president of education, their officers are there making sure they're having a good experience. And that's what the officers want too. They want to make sure that the program is working for everyone. They want to make sure that the check-in process is good. And they want to know, why are we losing members? Or why are we keeping members forever? Which is what we want. And at the bottom, you can see there's an average happiness score. 
I'm still working on this. Maybe by the time you ask me for this, I'll have it worked out a little bit more, but this is critical. You've got to know how happy people are. This is the new buddy onboarding orientation checklist. And you may not have seen it, but Ponzi Muddle is a new Toastmaster. He just joined. And his buddy is Peter King. Peter set up this information sheet for Ponzi and Ponzi has it. He knows how to get in touch with Peter. He knows when to get in touch with Peter and he knows he's covered. And the vice president of education knows and the VP of membership knows these people are on the right path. You may want to ask if this orientation process is still good come June 2021 when you review your plan. Now you can see that the tasks for a new member are broken up into learning segments. Each time that Peter sits down with Ponzi, he's gonna cover this material and he is going to make sure that Ponzi can do it. He's not leaving until he can do it. It's like a coach, but it's just a warm, fuzzy buddy. You want to make sure that your system is supporting members. On the desktop. Okay. And you know that on month two, when Peter starts helping Ponzi get into his evaluations, into his icebreaker, into the various roles like table topics, et cetera. He's also explaining why he needs to do this for leadership. I think a lot of times Toastmasters run their education programs like people who are sent out to gather rocks in a field to put them into a bucket. They, you say, why am I putting these rocks in a bucket? I'm just gonna check them off. I have 20 rocks. What am I gonna do with them? That is not the way it works. And Peter is going to show Ponzi that every time he steps up and takes a leadership role as a table topics master, every time he carefully crafts those questions, he is taking a leadership role and learning. He learns that when he evaluates, He's giving something valuable to somebody. He doesn't give people a pass and say, hey, that's really good. Hey, catch you next time. Peter shows Ponzi that you've got to really look at what they did good and what they can improve on. And you need to be honest, but tactful and sensitive to their needs. This is how Peter gets Ponzi on board. Now this is Ponzi's list, as you can see on the screen. You can see Ponzi and Peter went through each week and the vice president of membership and the vice president of education is checking with them every week, unlike once a month with the other people because nurturing and guiding a new member is so important. It's important for the entire organization to have somebody who's coming into the organization ready to go, ready to produce, ready to do what Toastmasters do. And you can see Ponzi had some problems. He had a four on week three and a three on week eight. And when the VP of membership said, hey, Ponzi, what's going on? I mean, you, you love Peter in week one. You love Peter in week five, what's going on? And Ponzi says, I'm tired of this. I'm ready to move on. And so they all talked openly, honestly, sincerely. And Peter said, great, I did my job. You're ready to go. Get a coaching buddy. Or here's another buddy who would be good for you, Ponzi. This is how it works. Ponzi's happy. Peter's happy, they're on to different things. Being 
successful in Toastmasters is really simple when you look at it. It takes some complicated steps to work through, but it also is very easy. You have a distinguished club program, which is education. The distinguished club program is about not getting those rocks in the field and putting them in a bucket, but it's celebrating the achievement of each and every member. The club success plan, I know a lot of you here, it's not your favorite thing to do, but next year it'll get easier. And your club success plan is all about the quality of your club, the quality of your meetings, how you are preparing for the present as well as for the future. Now, this is why I love the Buddy program. This is why I want you to embrace it because it's so wonderful. The Pathways Buddy Plan is all about relationships. And isn't that what we are here for in Toastmasters? We're not, we're not about gathering rocks. We're here to make relationships, experiences, and to share those experiences with others. Having a good buddy makes being a distinguished club easy. You're gonna just run through those projects and get a lot out of them. And the club program, well, it's there too. I believe that something that was so very obvious to us, something that we grew up with, our little friends walking to school together, our lab partners, our partners in class, it's so obvious. We need that in Toastmasters too. So what do you do next? The next thing you do is you get a copy of the Pathways Buddy Plan and you make it yours. Sit down with your officers or your club and work through it and say, we like this, we want this. We like this and we don't like that. You make it yours. Now I checked with Toastmasters International and I had a long conversation with the club quality team. And they said, we like this. You don't have to do it, just like you don't have to do the club success plan, but the guy at the club quality program said, you know, I want a copy. I think I want to do this in my club. This is something that you can implement fairly quickly. It takes about a month to get people trained, getting the buddies trained. My vision is that they will first learn how to be a good buddy about 10 minutes and then goal setting for themselves and how to help another person through goal setting. Then they're ready to go. So look, there's December. You can implement it, bring it back to your club now and get it ready to go for January. Now those new members that you've been trying to get or that you have, you can get them started right away. As soon as you get your buddies trained, you are ready to get those new Toastmasters started. Review your buddy plan with your other club plans. And just tell everyone to buddy up. Now, why do I say that? Some people may say, ah, oh, I don't like it. I don't wanna do it. Hey, why don't you and Clara do it and in six months tell us how it went we'll do it then I warn you not going to work why won't it work because this is a quality initiative that requires everyone doing it at the same time those people who go through the buddy program are going to be energized and they're going to want to find energized people to interact with that's why, for the sake of your club, just buddy up, get them paired up, and get them started. For the new member, remember, it's onboard orientation. You're teaching them the ropes. 
They may go away afterwards, but that's okay. You got them started. For an established member, you are supporting them and filling in the gaps. They may like somebody else, that's okay. It's just musical chairs. You just buddy up with somebody else. Remember that your journey begins at base camp. And when you're sitting there in your tent feeling lonely, hoping that somebody's gonna drop by, ask how you're doing, you don't need to be alone anymore. All you need to do is look down the path and find a buddy. Because no matter which way you look, forward to where you wanna be or back to where you were, there's a buddy and Toastmasters for you. And I wanna leave you with this. There is always help if you care to ask. It's there. So call me or email me for a copy of your buddy plan and the buddy onboarding orientation plan. Here's my name, Suzanne Loeb. I'm in Division G Pathways, my phone number and my email address. And now, go buddy up. Ruth, it's to you and those questions. Thank you, Suzanne. Sorry, I just had to unmute. I've repeated Suzanne's email address in the chat there. And if anyone has any questions that come to mind, we have time. So go ahead and put them in there and I'll read them out to Suzanne and we'll have her answers there. Um, I think you just brought us another really valuable tool to navigate Toastmasters. There's so much to it, but there's, where do you start? I think a lot of people find out. So you've just highlighted how important it is to have a friend in the club to get new people started. I think this is great. Uh, I love your quote, our chief want in life is someone who shall make us do what we can, pull us along, encourage us. So that's great. And I see how this fits in the big picture of the club success plan. So really appreciate what you've presented here tonight, this morning. Um, I also like your reference to labs and quality control because I'm a lab person. So you just caught my attention with that too. So um, one of the questions is, has this plan been used in a real club and is there some results that you can tell us about? This plan has been used informally. It's been used in clubs informally, but there has, to my knowledge, and I did an extensive internet search, there have been people who say, oh yeah, I've got a buddy in Toastmasters. And I said, well, where's the plan? I wanna know the plan. I come from a, a safety background, a healthcare safety. I was a safety director. I created these plans and I say it doesn't exist unless it's written down. <laughs> And that's what I felt about the buddy system. People said, oh yeah, I'm gonna write about buddies. I'm gonna talk about buddies. I got a buddy, but it needs to be organized so that we can really control the quality of it. Now you might say control is a bad word, but I really think that we need to be very mindful of the experience that members have. And we wanna make every experience good. And if there's a bad experience, we need to know about it and fix it. So no, there's been no buddy plan to my knowledge, but we're doing it in division G and we are, we're going to roll it out. We'll let you know if you want to, want to tune in and send me an email. <laughs> 